Okay, in this tutorial we're going to cover V-Ray materials. So let's go ahead and start by creating a plane. And we'll add a sphere or a, um, a teapot to that. Now, a teapot's in there just because it allows you to test materials. It's a really complex surface. You can see material in different orientations. It's a really nice kind of basic object if you're just testing materials. So the first thing you want to do, actually, before you add materials, before you set anything up, is to select an object, go to your modifier list. If you want, you can always just change the display color um, right here, so I could change that. That will be the color of the object until you add a material, but as soon as you add a material, it will override that object. So just keep that in mind. You can also change the name, of course. So the first thing you want to do is actually, from the modifier list, go in here and choose the UVW map modifier. This is really important. This tells Max how to apply the material to the object. If you don't do that, it'll just default to something that doesn't have you don't have much control over and doesn't look very good, especially on complex geometries. So you always want to add a UVW map, especially if you're going to use a bitmap or something. You really have to do this. But use a UVW map, not the mapping adder clear. Later, when we get to really complex geometries, you can use unwrap UVW map, which is for like character modeling and stuff. Um, and and um, you know if you have like a complex machine and add decals to it. But for now, we're just going to use UVW map. And the first thing you want to do is then change the mapping type to match the kind of geometry that you're mapping. So planar obviously doesn't work very well because it's a three-dimensional object. So in this case, I'll choose something like box or, sph or spherical. It's really up to you. If you go further down, you can change the tiling, but you really don't want to do this until you apply the map. When you apply the map, you can see how it's tiling and adjust it here. Make sure real world map size is deselected. In earlier versions, this will be selected by default, so make sure it's unselected. That's really important. Um, and you can change some of these other things, but the default will work pretty well in this case. I'll go ahead and select the plane, and I'll also add a UVW map modifier to the plane. So down here, UVW map, and this one is planar, so I'll just stick with the planar. Make sure real world map size is, size is deselected. Okay, so now we can go into our material editor. Um, M is the shortcut, and it should open something that looks like this. You can also access this. There's a, uh, you don't see it here, but there's a material editor if your window is bigger. You can also get to it under rendering material editor. And there's a compact material editor and slate material editor. Slate is the more recent updated version, so I recommend using that. Compact is if you've used Max for a long time and just get used to that one, but in this example, we'll use a slate material editor. So it looks like this. You can always change between these and the modes. You can change between the two types and, and see what they do. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create a material. Now, the way Max works uh, is that you make a material and you apply maps to the material. So we want to start in our material list here. If I shrink all this, you can we can expand it as we go. Um, we have materials, so we start by creating those. We can add maps to the materials if we want. All the materials in your scene will be listed here, and these are kind of samples um, that are just by default. Once you start adding materials, they'll show up there. But what we want to do is start with materials. There are general materials. These are built into Max, and you can try these. They work in V-Ray. Um, if you have V-Ray set up, you'll have a V-Ray option down here. If you expand that, these are all the V-Ray materials you can use. So there's a lot of them, like Tune, and, and you can try different ones. The basic one is the V-Ray MTL, and that's what we'll use here. V-Ray MTL wrapper, by the way, is if you've created a material on a different render engine, you can wrap it with a V-Ray material, so that's sort of a nice feature. So I'll double-click on V-Ray MTL, and then it will show up in my slate editor here. Um, these are all the different maps that you can add into this uh, material. So if I go down here, you'll open this up. These are all the different map types, so you have those kind of maps. You have a bunch of different maps. You can expand these menus and just see all the different uh, maps you can use that are built into 3ds Max, all these general maps. Like if you're going to use an image, you would want to use a bitmap here. We'll do that for the plane. Uh, but all the other ones are kind of located here. So uh, I'll do another tutorial with procedural textures. But a lot of these, if you use these maps, are considered procedural textures, which means you can change parameters and they'll update on the geometry. And they're built into 3ds Max. All right, so now let's go back to this material. Let's double click on it. Um, all the settings, you, you know a material selected if you have this um, thick dashed line around it. That means that's the current material it's selected with its parameters over here. If I go over here, these are the parameters I can change. The first is the color, which is, corresponds to the word diffuse. So you could choose a color. Let's just choose kind of a bright uh, pink for this one. Say OK. 
Uh, if you click here, you can expand that just to make it a little bigger and see it a little bit better. Um, there are some presets. So, for example, if you want to use a preset, we can do that for the next material. But you can choose, you know, glass or gold. This is in the more recent version of, of V-Ray. So if you don't have this, it means you're using an earlier version of V-Ray. Um, reflect is on a scale from black to white. So if I click this, black means no reflectivity. If I increase the gray in there, it'll become a little bit reflective. You can see it showing up there. A mirror would be totally white, so that's like a mirror. So any kind of value within here will add some reflectivity to the object. Um, you can change the different settings once you have reflection. None of these work until you add some gray into this. So if I say OK, um, I can now change glossiness. So if I go to like 0.5, for example, you'll see it's more of a sheen, like a plastic. 0.9 will be a little more polished. So you can change those values there. Um, refraction is the transparency. So if I select here and add some gray, like white would be totally transparent, like glass. If I add some gray, it'll be more or less transparent. So um, one thing to keep in mind, if you add uh, refraction or reflection, or both of them, it increases rendering time. So if you have a lot of materials that have refraction, transparency, and reflection, you're going to increase your render time. Just, so just keep that in mind. Um, the next thing is fog color, which is for um, like subsurface scattering materials. So if you have uh, a material that is translucent, you can increase translucency and, and try some different defaults there and then and change the fog color to see what effect that has. You can also make a material self-illuminate. There's a few ways to do this. You can actually add self-illumination here, or you can add under diffuse, there's a, a light map. So if I go over here, um, there's a way to um, under the V-Ray material, so it's actually a material type, you could do a V-Ray light material, which makes it like a light, or if you look at my V-Ray lights um, tutorial, you can actually make a mesh into a light source. So there's a few ways to do that if you want to. Self-illumination is nice if you have some pattern and texture and want to keep that, or even use a bitmap um, for that. So when you use maps, so this will work. If you want to apply this material, you can just drag from this output here right onto the material. The other way to apply it is to select the object and hit this button here, which is Assign Material to Selection. Um, and so that material is now a material that's going to work. That's just a basic flat color. If you want to start getting a little more complex with your materials, you can add maps to these different slots here. So you can see diffuse uh, corresponds to the image of the material. So if there's um, you know, a brick pattern, you would have a picture of brick, and you'd plug that into diffuse. If you wanted a reflection, like um, some parts of an object polished, other parts not, you could plug in a black and white bitmap here with that pattern of polish into reflective map or any of these other maps. So displace, you could actually literally displace a surface using a map or one of these procedural um, built-in maps over here. So it could be an image or it could be a map. Um, and then self-illumination, all these different things uh, have maps that you can apply to add a map. You just drag out from diffuse. Let's actually create a new material here. So we'll do this for the plane. So go back to uh, materials, V-Ray MTL. This will be our new material here. And we'll use a bitmap here. So there's a few ways you can do it. You can drag from this input here, let go. And then these are all the different maps that you can use for that channel. So the basic one is the general bitmap. That's a color or a, an image that you download and, and apply from somewhere else. So that's one way you can do it. Um, you can, to change this, you can then double click on it and then find the bitmap link here and then search again for your bitmap. I could use a, the rendering I did, for example. And that's one way to do it. I can select and delete this. Um, you can also use these other maps. So I could use maps that are built into 3ds Max, like a, a basic checkerboard, for example. And all of these maps are going to have different settings and parameters over here on the right. So this one, you can see there's color A and color B. Let's say color A is red, color B is, is light blue. So once you have a material, you can also add maps to these different slots as well. But once you're ready, you can just apply this again by dragging it. We'll put it on the plane. And one thing to keep in mind here, sometimes if you don't see it, you can click this button here. And that will allow you to see sometimes it shows up gray even though the materials apply. If that happens, just click this button right here. And then it should show up there. 
Now you can see I have a checker pattern on there. There's two things I can do to tile that. I can either tile it directly in the material or in the map itself. Um, and that's if you want to just tile one of the maps and not tile the other ones. If you're okay tiling the entire material, you can select the object, go into your UVW map and just tile it here. So for example, if I want to tile it four times in the U, I can do that or eight times in the V. And that's how you can start to tile material. Now the other really nice thing you can do, if you open up your UVW map, select Gizmo, you can actually rotate and move the map itself without moving or rotating the material. So I could put a material very precisely on the surface of the geometry using the Gizmo in the UVW map. And that's another reason you really want to use the UVW map modifier. So that's it for materials. Those are the basic materials. Of course, it gets more complex as you add um, additional maps in here. Notice like whenever you see one of these slots here, um, you can apply a new map to it. So that color instead of a color could become a map. Um, the other thing is when you see the word no map, that's another way to add the map. If I had a map here, it's going to also add it there. So um, it doesn't matter how you add it. Uh, you can either add it by dragging out of that slot, uh, out of the slot, or you could just add it right in the channel itself. The other thing is if you see if you see a little empty slot here, that's the other place you can add maps. So right here there's an M. That means a map has been applied to that channel. So you can see, of course, there's the map. So you could just click on one of these to apply it. So there's a lot of different ways you could do the exact same thing. I just want to point that out. The final way to do it is if you double click on the material, go down to maps, these are also all the maps. So again, you know, I have a checker, checker in the um, diffuse map slot. So you can also add it here if you want. The nice thing about here is you can actually change the amount that it's applied. So if you have some um, displacement or something or bump and you want to increase it, you can increase that number or decrease the number depending on how much bump you want that map to produce on the surface.